kilometer. This one is uh, positive displacement type, diaphragm, volume measurement, flow rate, conversion for, for the flow rate for each pressure temperature. So this, this is not in the quiz today, okay, but it can be somewhere else, like in the exam. So this is how we put the office plate inside, take it out, you watch the video on this, right? Okay. Vernal contractor. Did we talk about this? That part called Vernal contractor. So if it is not in the quiz today, it should be in the exam later. Okay. That is the name that you should know. So in the O exam, we point like pressure at point one, pressure at point two, and pressure at point three. Like which one is highest, which, which one is lowest. And last class, I told you that number two has lower pressure than, lower pressure than number three, right? Still remember that? That's the pressure at Renal Contractor. Orifit plate, okay, has a sharp edge on one side. Okay. So this part is kind of important. If you look at this picture carefully, you see the meter look like the plate look like that. And you have flow from that side. <coughs> is this correct? So we have the sharp edge on the part that faces to the flow. The sharp edge is upstream. Okay? That's it. That is very important. If somehow we have the sharp edge on a different side, like this, this thing wrong, the number that you get will be different for the case where sharp edge is upstream. So in the exam, Make sure that you know that the sharp edge is upstream of the floor. Okay? And okay, floor stabilizer. So, you know, we talked about the velocity profile development a little bit previously, right? When we install Coriolis, uh, not Coriolis, um, orifice, orifice plate, it doesn't mean that we can put the plate anywhere. It's like, okay, we go up, we have just a short distance, and have all the plate. And then long distance this side. And you have flow from left to right. This way of doing it is bad. Don't do this, okay? We should do another way around. Go up, have certain distance for flow development. Okay, for velocity profile to be fully developed. And then have the plate and then have enough distance on this side too, okay? So there's a place for flow to be fully developed. What if we don't have enough length or we want it to develop faster? You can install something like this, okay? This flow conditioner, you put it there, it will make uh, kind of less turbulent or something, it helps the flow to develop faster, okay? This is like, so this is like a branch and you have a flow in this hole, cause a little bit of uh, restriction and it's straightened the, the flow, has a velocity profile to lock quicker, okay? Orifice meter, we have, primary element is the meter tube, we have a orifice plate holding, positioning device. Basically, we have everything that you have seen in the video for the uh, senior or, or fit, uh, fitting that when we take it out, put it in. So we measure pressure from this side and that side. So this is a French top. Okay, so when we have pressure difference, then we calculate. Of course, if we measure the pressure 
at different locations. So pipe tap, look at this. This one says pipe tap. Pipe tap means we, we have the whole, uh, the measurement from the pipe, from this side. So that is pipe tap. If you have flange tap, you have the measurement from the flange. Whatever we use, we need to know because the formula for this, the, like the empirical constant will be different, okay? So you need to know the, which type we use so that we can use the correct formula for that. Mm. Equation for, or for equation, uh, metering part is look quite a lot, so what do we do? We skip and let you read it. Do we have it in the exam? No, if we have, I will just give it to you and I will ask you which term means what. That, I think that's fair enough because we use this for the pump question, right? I don't expect you to memorize that. What I try to say is that at the end, at the very end, after you do this whole derivation, at the very end, you use a formula that has some kind of c square, skip, 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 and you have this kind of thing, okay? Mass flow rate equal to square root of something on the right hand side. Okay, that's the formula that you will use. The derivation, don't get me wrong, it is important, okay, and but we cannot go through every equation. Mm, we kind of run out of time, okay, so you can go through this by yourself. Will it be an exam? No, because I didn't really teach it. But if you have questions and want to ask about it, you can ask me. If you graduate already and you still have to do something like this, you can email me. Mm, okay, let's take a look at the formula. What you need to do now is, where does this formula come from? So your answer will be energy balance. Okay? So that's what you need to know. Because we, we start with, look at this. We start with mechanical energy balance equation, right? This equation. Energy balance. First law of thermodynamic. From this first law of thermodynamic, we do something. Then make some term, add some term, do the calculation. And then at the end, we get this formula. So what you need to know is, it is from energy balance. How? Oh, this is how. Okay. This page is for you to read, which is you are the senior, and many people expect you to be able to understand this. That's how it comes from. Good? Okay. So the point is, you use this formula. When you look at this formula, you see that there's a C square. Okay. C square. Some, some kind of constant, okay? Let's check something. You see beta square. Beta square is ratio of area, okay? For the case where pi one is a, is a pi, and pi two is the error fit, and defining beta as A2 over A1. So, error fit area on the top, over pipe area on the bottom. That's a beta square. So this beta thing, it tells you if we have orifice plate at the edge. No. At the edge, we have the plate, right? And we have flow in the middle, correct? <coughs> so beta will go from um, 0 to 1, right? A2 is uh, Orifit area, A1 is the pipe area, so orifit area will be less than pipe area, correct? So at most, it is 1. At least, it is 0. Okay? So it's an area ratio, that's beta square. Now let's go back to our equation. Um, oh, beta to the power of 4. So, if beta is high, Marcos, 
Are you okay? All right. So if beta is high, what happened, my cost? Do we have more m dot or less m dot? If what is high? Beta. This term. You will have uh, more. Other terms stay the same. You have more m dot, right? Does it make sense to you? Yes. Okay. More beta one minus something more close to one is about zero. So the de denominator close to zero, this whole thing go up, right? So this means uh, if you have if you have a certain pressure drop. Okay, let's say this pressure drop is uh, 5 or 10 psi. That pressure drop is 10 psi. And then you put beta in this equation, you get m dot. Okay. If you have, if you want less pressure drop, what, what do you do? If you want less pressure drop, my cause, what do you do? You want more beta or less beta? at the same mass flow rate. If you want more pressure drop, okay, let's say you want more pressure drop at the same mass flow rate. So you want more beta. What do you do with beta? Also increase it? Mm, maybe, let's take a look at the equation like this. Let's, let's take, take a look at the plate itself. Okay, this, this thing look good. So if the area go down, and then what do we have? If the mass flow rate stay the same, area go down, this time you should be able to answer me. Okay, let's change from my cost, next to my cost, double. So if we have same mass flow rate, okay, and area shrink, so the flow area go down. Do we have more pressure drop or less pressure drop? You want O'Neill to help you? Yes. O'Neill? More. More pressure drop, right? Smaller hole, more pressure drop. Make sense? Okay. Just memorize that. Smaller hole, more pressure drop for the same mass flow rate. And whatever happened to it inside the equation, it should match with this. You are common sense, okay? So, if you put some value in the equation and you get something else that doesn't look like this, then something is wrong. <coughs> okay, beta is just the area ratio. We have a formula, and in the formula we have C value. C value, mm, let's go back a little bit for C value. C value, who wants to answer this? What word is a C value? Adam? Adam Strong. Adam Strong, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what is a C value? Uh, just like coefficient. To account for something? Yeah. How about friction? Yeah. And other irreversibility. So we have unknown constant inside. And we cannot get it by just thinking about it. What we do is, we do this. Open the table, right? What do you think? We have several tables for you. Just open the table. There's a non constant in the formula. Uh, so there's a formula. There's a non constant. To get a constant, you just open the table. You will have homework to do that will train you on how to open the table. So basically, you just read the table name and get familiar with it so that in the exam you can do it quicker or we don't even need it in the exam because it's too easy or something. Okay, so we have uh, unknown constant. Now, let's take a look at this formula. Look at the density part. You see, density part. How do we get density? Density can come from PV equal Z NRT. And we rearrange it, we have rho equal to this formula. 
Okay, I think this thing can be in exam easily, right? If I can, if I tell you molecular weight, if I tell you pressure, temperature, and I print you the Z factor chart, can you tell me the density of gas? Yes, of course, right? Mm. Let's take a look here. So we rearrange it. Rearrange it more. Do some unit conversion. And at the end, we get this basic orbit meter equation. You like it? Oh, okay. So it's just that. That's the basic one. Oh, I just forget. I need to announce something. Let's let's wait until Connor come back, okay? But we we don't have we will not have class this Thursday. Who sit next to the who sit next to Connor? What's your name, sir? Shane. Shane, can you tell Connor about what we announced? Yeah. Uh, the we have the field trip, okay? If you miss the field trip with university skills, you have to do the report within some certain day that that's in the syllabus. So don't miss a field trip. It's very difficult to miss because we have it two times. Thursday and Friday. And you already signed up on which day, right? Everyone, do you s submit the release form? Yes. Yep. OK. So then what is the address code for this field trip? OK, it's full PPE required on all parts of the trip. The steel toe, our hat safety glasses and FRC through the plant and through the field operations. Do they give us FRC or we no. need to have by ourselves? We have FRC. Okay, have FRC. When do we depart? 12? We'll be leaving at 12 o'clock. We'll be leaving from the bus stop right over here by the, the petroleum parking lot on Glenna Goodacre. The bus will not be there until just probably uh, 11.45. They can't sit there a long time. So we need to be ready to go get on the bus at 11.45 and uh, load up, and then we'll just head out from there. Uh, 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 just directly. Uh, yeah. so bus stop. Bus next to the construction. Between the construction and petroleum engineering parking lot, there's a bus stop. You go to that bus stop at 11.45, take the bus. The bus will depart at noon, 6 p.m. Is it 6 p.m.? Yeah, we will probably beat that sun because the last stop we make is the field operations. And uh, those guys like to quit and go home, so it may go a little longer. We'll definitely be back by six. Oh, it can be a little bit better than six. Okay, Connor, you need full PPE, okay? Do you go on Thursday or Friday? Friday. Oh, okay, Friday. Mm, tomorrow lab. We have tomorrow lab. I look at the syllabus and we have the lab tomorrow, okay? Tomorrow lab will be about the uh, no, horizontal well, fluid flow in horizontal well. Okay? And you need second class for tomorrow lab. Come, sign that sign sheet, be there the whole time, and you get 100%. Okay? And for the field trip, same thing, you go there, you just need to go there, and then you get 100% point. In the field trip, uh, when we go to the plant, from the bus, you should see the big, long, horizontal vessel. That one will be slug catcher, okay? That's the first equipment I think you will see. And have fun. We don't have class Thursday, and I, I worry that some of you may complain that we lose some contact hour and I didn't need contact hour. <laughs> but actually, uh, Southwest Pilgrim Engineering Short Course has to move from April to May, okay? So in the syllabus, I allow you to go to the short course and do the report, 
But now short calls is move or cancel and move to main. So that day, we will have class and they do cover the class that we miss on this Thursday. Okay? No problem. Everything will be just fine. So tomorrow come in your lab session and take a look at manifesto. Today we will finish the we will finish the middle part and then go over a little bit on the material that we will cover in tomorrow tomorrow lab. Okay? So that in tomorrow lab you understand all the theory and then you just go and look. Okay? For the after we finish the metering and lab on manifest flow and the field trip on the gas plant, we will do some uh, gas pipeline and liquid pipeline. Pressure drop in the pipe. There are a couple of equations for gas pipeline. For gas pipeline, you have split gas, panhandle A, panhandle B, those kind of things, okay? Just a couple of equations. And then be ready to do more on the gas plant, I think. And you have the hydration unit on at the end we do water flooding and a little bit on flush rents. Okay? So let's finish this metering part. So meter run is about orifit plate. Okay. We can also use Coriolis flow meter for gas. Coriolis flow meter also work for gas. It is also good for liquid, okay, for single phase flow. It can use for multi-phase flow, but that's not good, okay, because you don't really know how much is gas or how much is liquid. If you have like 50% liquid, 50% gas, Coriolis flow meter will give you mass flow rate and the average density, okay. So for overfit plate, Let's take a look at this equation, this basic equation. Tb is in Röntgen for standard, temp, uh, standard absolute temperature, Pb standard absolute pressure, C is the constant, overfit area is A2, overfit diameter D2, and we just put the number in, then we can get the flow rate. So let's say we have the difference in inch of water. That's a pressure drop, right? We put the pressure drop in here, then we can calculate flow rate. And then we know how much gas that we sell. Okay, let's take a look a little bit more. Why do we have so many equations? You see the difference? A and D square for 6 pi 24 and 6 pi 25. So that is, has to do with mm, pi and pi over 4 or something, okay? So we can rearrange it in certain way. So you have flow rate multiplied by several components, several components add together. <coughs> the reason that we can do it this way, or the reason that we want to do it this way is for me to show you that we have flow rate over here as a function of square root of differential pressure. Okay, and PF absolute static pressure. And every everything in the front we just lump it into sigma. Okay. So this equation is, where do we get this from? Markov's. Are you ready to change? Let, let's change to Elite Faulkner. Where do we get this equation from? Where's the first equation that we use in the derivation? Okay, zero. Make an? Yeah. Where do we start? I'll take zero too. Where, 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 where do we start? What do you call this equation? Energy balance. Right? We start from energy balance, do some derivation. So horizontal flow is equal to zero, 
no work done by fluid that turn equal to zero, work loss due to friction, everything as absorbed in constant C parameter, and then you get this equation. So everything comes from energy balance with the unknown constant. Put everything in, rearrange it, we can have flow rate as a function of constant multiplied by square root of uh, H and P sub F. Okay, P sub F is absolute static pressure, and H is uh, differential pressure in inch of water. Mm. Okay, C prime. We lump every time together, okay, and we call it C prime. So that C prime consists of several constant multiplied, not constant, several parameter multiplied to each other, okay? And we have 11 parameter multiplied to each other, okay? Those 11 parameter, after you multiply them together, you get this C prime, which is that thing, okay? The reason that we do this kind of thing is because there are some kind of error of unknown constant that we cannot really calculate it. We have to get from a table. We will give you more accurate uh, value. Everything actually can be calculated if you want to calculate it. You see, diameter square, beta, area ratio, gamma t, gamma sub t, t bar z, compressibility factor. This this term can be calculated, right? Each of them. But the recommendation is not to do it that way. The recommendation is to get each term from the table on the back. Okay, let's take a look at each term. Mm. Oh, first, let me read this part. The meaning of C prime. Increasing C prime means that at the same pressure and differential pressure, we get more flow rate, okay? Or at the same flow rate, we C prime go up, we get less pressure drop. So this C prime tell us about the relationship between flow rate and pressure drop. Is it important? Yes, it is. How much that it should be important? If we go back to the first slide, it is about $1 million per year, okay, for 1% error. So if you have 1% error in the general calculation, okay, I do calculation, I have 1% error. It's okay, right, for 1% error. So if we start with the, the formula directly, put everything in, and try to calculate the flow rate based on the pressure drop, that will give us some error, just 1%, we can tolerate it in most cases, but not in this case. Because 1% error is, can be that much, $1 million per year. Okay, so we don't want 1% error, we want as low as possible, but we don't want to pay more for the orifice meter or for the corrosive flow meter. You know, this thing we can uh, we can buy a more expensive meter. Okay, more expensive mean pay instead of a couple thousand dollars, you pay like sixteen thousand dollars. Coriolis flow meter is more expensive than the orifice plate. Okay, so if you use Coriolis flow meter. You just get the number, look at it, it's done. There's no calculation to do, actually. We just, we just calibrate it and verify and certify already. But if we use uh, per, uh, our fit plate, uh, it is, has to be, does it have to be certified too, the orifit plate? No. How, how much they cost for the orifit plate? Thirty dollars, and the pressure drop measurement. 
I have I have pressure of measurement in the lab downstairs, like one thousand dollars. Just that. So yeah, pressure drop measurement needs to be a chart. This be a chart. Even cheaper. Even cheaper. Now the electronic readout, that's what runs the cost of it, and then the ability to read it. So one meter run will cost about a couple thousand dollars. Um Coriolis flow meter, just the meter itself, can range from uh, $8,000. $8,000 give you very small, like, like this, this small. It doesn't measure much flow rate. If you want high flow rate, like what I have in the lab, $16,000, or very high flow rate, it will be $60,000. 60, okay, $30,000, $60,000. That's usual for Coriolis flow meter. Very expensive. Compared to if if we have more flow rate, what do you do with the old fit plate? We just change the plate, right? Change the plate that have more hole, larger hole or something. Just that. It's cheap, very cheap. Okay. Oh, I should not say cheap. Less expensive, more economical, <laughs> better. But okay, so with the better equipment. It comes with the better calculator, okay? You have to have better calculator. Look at each term, F sub B. <coughs> Basic old factor, flange cap. Okay, let's go back. F B. So F B, we open the table for flange tap. Okay. So this table, oh, let me read this part. Basic old fit. Factor FB is dependent is depend on the location of the tap, internal diameter of the run, the size of the orifice. FB can be obtained from A22 for flange tap and table A27 for pipe tap. So this table is for flange tap. And if we go another thought, I didn't put that table here. So let's take a look at the table itself for F sub B, orifit factor for flange tap. We have orifit diameter, have several numbers here, right? And we have nominal and published inside uh, diameter in inch. So we have this number. Mm. So this number in the table is F sub B, okay? And more, <coughs> more information will be given for you in the uh, uh, reading material and in the homework. You will do homework about this. So basically you open the table, the right table, if it is flange tab, you open the flange tab table, get the right value and put it in. All of it. Two, three, and what's that? Four, and this uh, actual diameter, I think. So, diameter, is that diameter of the pi or something? Let's take a look at this pi. So, the detail of the table, you will see the reading material. What I want to tell you something is this pi. You see this? Flange tap and pipe tap. The coefficient is different in the actual calculation. <coughs> if we use just a theory, how do we account for that? Is there any way for us to account for that in theory between flange tab and the pipe tab? Maybe just a distance, right? Maybe just a distance that we can account that in the theory. Okay. So, but this is just, it's not about the distance, it's about what kind of tap? So dif different way of put the hole in this pipe give us different kind of pressure drop. You see that? And this kind of thing doesn't cannot really be estimated by just the theory. That's why we have to use the table. Okay. Second term. F sub R, <coughs> mm, 
Random number factor, f sub r is dependent on the pipe diameter with constant density, velocity of the pipe and I have that formula b over square root uh, h uh, w p f okay b is the value from the table so open the table get b value mm. so there are more more table for you y1 FM, FL, FA, and this uh, reading material and uh, calculation example. Okay, so <coughs> previously we have uh, like a, a chart to do the reading. So I have seen the chart, but what I have seen too is it look like just a blue transmitter and give us the, the number. Okay. Is that more common or depending on how, how rich you are? <laughs> it's getting to be a lot more common than the electron. Can you go back to your uh, table, page 24, maybe slide 33? Look up there in the upper right hand side. It's got the beta factor there. And it's defined differently. Oh, okay. Than the beta factor that's uh, in the, uh, in the, the direction. material balance equation. So here is the diameter of the orifice plate divided by the di internal diameter of the tube. That's different from what you've seen before because it was an area ratio. This is strictly a diameter ratio and you got to make sure you use the diameter ratio when you go to this one to get this back. So this number is the diameter ratio? Right. <coughs> Not the area ratio. Okay. Let's go over each parameter a little bit more, and then we can finish and do quiz, or no, go with the material that we will cover in the lab tomorrow, okay? <coughs> so this gives us B value, so constant here is to account for impact of random numbers. Another constant, we have um, Y value, expansion factor, look at this one. Expansion factor is used for variation of the density because of the pressure drop and adiabatic temperature change. Wow, what's that? Who wants to help me? Next to me again, what's your name? <laughs> Haley? Mm -hmm. What is adiabatic temperature change? Um, yes? What's your answer? No shared in entropy? Mm -hmm. Is that what you will say when you have trouble to build? Or they don't ask what is the uh, adiabatic temperature change or something, right? So adiabatic means Q equal to zero. Q equal to zero. So this is about variation of the pressure drop. Uh, density variation because of the pressure drop and the temperature change. So across the orifice plate, you have change in uh, pressure, right? And some change in temperature too. See that? So there's a change of pressure and change of temperature. How do we account for that in the theory? We did not. It's somewhat complicated. So that's why we need a table, right? So that's an expansion factor. Okay, that's a y value. Um, care should be taken to select the correct table for pressure tap, where static pressure is measured upstream, use y1 or downstream, y2. So the value of y will depend on where do we measure the static pressure. If the static pressure is upstream, use y1. Static pressure is downstream, use y2. Of course, you will go through the calculation example and do the homework and do the exam, right? Uh, let's do the next parameter. F sub PB, there's pressure factor. So there's pressure factor depending on the, the contract pressure base, which location or which state that we, we are at. Temperature base factor 
T sub B, flowing temperature factor. Oh, okay. Now look at this one. You see, 520. Just use 520, okay? Because I think other factors should account for for it should be 519.96 or five something, right? It's not that exact. You remember Q, uh, Rengen to Fahrenheit? So it's not exactly 520. So for this one, just use 520. So we have fluid temperature factor, the, temperature, the factor to account for fluid temperature, the factor to account for Supersic gravity factor, so compressibility factor, Z value. <coughs> so this factor can change from year one to year two, right? If year one we have rich gas or we have different uh, specific gravity, so this factor can change over time. F sub M manometer factor used with mercury differential gauge to compensate for the column of the com complex gas uh, opposite to the mercury lake. Mm -hmm. So you have that factor for different temperature, okay? And for different flowing pressure and this uh, specific gravity part. So the, the 11 factor, gauge location factor, F sub L used with orific meter and uh, installed location other than 45 latitude and sea level elevation. Okay, are we at equator? Are we uh, not quite at the equator? Are we at the North Pole or something? <laughs> so that's the value. So this thing depends on the location, right? And we have, okay, sea level. Gauge elevation above the sea level. How many feet that we are above the sea level? Are we 2,000 feet, 4,000 feet? And we have a little bit different number. What do you think? Is it too much? Not quite too much for this application because they want to get it as accurate as possible because a little bit of error cause problem, right? Okay. General uh, F sub A, orifice thermal expansion factor is introduced to correct for the error